Hello, we're going to start with the basics of Excel, starting by just opening it up off of your desktop. So it's starting in my, oh, I was using Windows 7 in this case, and I opened it up. And you'll see when you open Excel, you of course get a list of the different templates. And I'm just going to choose blank template or blank workbook. So in Excel, we have a workbook. So Excel looks a lot like uh, most of the other programs in Microsoft Office. So we have the title bar, we have some minimize and maximize and exit buttons. We have the button that allows us to... Uh, if I click on that, auto hide the ribbon, and we could of course sign into our Microsoft account, which I won't do right now. That's not really necessary for the kind of work that we're doing. And we have the ribbon up at the top of the screen, and there are multiple tabs on the ribbon. Now, one thing to get to, used to, of course, there's the home tab and the insert tab and the page layout tab. So there are the menu tabs up at the top of the screen that are part of the ribbon. But Excel also has what's known as a worksheet. And the worksheets are listed down at the bottom. So when, now when you open Office, or sorry, when you open Excel 2013, you see that you have by default uh, one worksheet. And I can right click and rename the worksheet to maybe I'm gonna make a uh, personal budget. So I can just call that budget. And then I can click on the new sheet button and I can add another worksheet and another worksheet. So old versions of Excel would start with three worksheets and very few people, I mean, you don't always use the other worksheets. So you can always right click and delete that worksheet. Oh, that's rename. I can rename it or I can choose delete. And I can also rename it and choose delete or I can rename it and change the tab color to something more interesting. So you can change the tab colors. This is the highlighted or active tab. And now you'll notice that the tab will actually change colors. So I'm just going to delete that extra one. So most of the stuff you're going to be using at the is on the home screen. When you see the intersection between a row, which is the numbered areas in Excel, so this is row one goes all the way across and row two goes all the way across and row three runs all the way across horizontally across the screen. That's a row. Then when we have the columns up at the top, so column A, column C, column D, columns run down the screen. So column D runs all the way down the screen from row 1 to row 2 to row 30. And we'll see it goes very, 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 very far. Excel has a million, more than a million rows that you can handle, uh, but we're not going to be looking at that in this particular instance. So wherever a row and a cell intersect, or sorry, when a row and a column intersect, you get a cell. So this particular cell has the address A1. So we always start by saying the column letter first and then the row number. So this up here in the name box, I can click in the name box and we'll talk about changing the names of cells a little bit later on. So this is going to be my personal budget. So I can just start typing into the active cell and the letters would be there. And whenever I'm done giving instructions to the computer, I press enter. So I'm going to move down to the next row, and now I'd be able to start some entering some information. But I also want to make sure I can save my spreadsheet uh, first before I go any further. So I always want to save my work somewhere important on my, on my computer while I know where I can find it again later. There's the Save button up at the top, and the shortcut for saving on Windows is Control-S. And under File, I can also choose Save if it's the first time or every other uh, other, every other time I want to just save the file and I can choose save as which will allow me to change to a new location and a new file. So I'm going to browse to my computer. I'm going to store it in my documents and I'm going to, you could probably go onto your network drive and if you don't already have one create a CP102 folder and inside that folder you can store some other information and I'm just going to call this uh, my budget. Now, there are different types of files for Excel. The default is an Excel workbook. That's the name of an Excel file. And you'll see that there's also macro-enabled workbook, binary workbooks, and Excel 97, 2003. That's the old style of workbooks. And what you can't see is that right now, these would actually save with the .xlsx extension. So I could turn on my file extensions. So I can turn on my file extensions. That's actually been disabled in this account. I'll have to go fix that later. But if we just type in the name of the file and save it as an Excel workbook, this will actually be an X, it'll be called mybudget.xlsx. So I'm going to save the file. There, now, whenever, uh, periodically as I work on the computer, the computer will automatically save some of the, uh, save the file, but I'll want to make sure that I save frequently by uh, making sure that I click the save button or press control S to make sure I don't lose any work. Now, just a little neat feature here about the active cell. The active cell has a fill handle in the lower right hand corner. That's what that little black square is there. So I'm going to start by creating a budget so in this column, I can write the word income, and right beside it, I'm going to type in the word January. 
So here's the January column and I can press enter to tell the computer that I'm done. Now there's a little secret about the autofill handle. If I select the word January by clicking on it once, and if I move my mouse over to the autofill handle, it's going to turn into a small black plus sign. You see here that it's a big white plus sign. Right on the edge of that corner is the bl small black plus sign. So now I can click with the left mouse button, and look what happens down in the status bar. It now says drag outside the selection to extend the series or fill and drag inside to clear. So I'm going to drag outside the selection. This is actually a recognized series within Excel. It knows that January is the beginning of the names of the months. So I'm going to drag it all the way to December and I'm going to let go and it will automatically put all the names of the months in there for me. Now one interesting thing to also notice is that when I type in words, like the word income, the text is left aligned and we can see that we can align text either left aligned or centered or right aligned. By default, text will be left aligned, so these are called labels in a spreadsheet. And if I enter a value, so maybe this was my, uh, my income for my wages or my salary under January, I can type in the number uh, $1,000.29. We always we can put in the decimal places, but we never put in commas. We never put in dollar signs because we'll leave that up to the formatting of our data. And I just press enter, and it automatically brings us to the next line. So I've entered some numbers here. So I've entered a label for wages, and I've entered some values. So values, the numbers that you enter into a spreadsheet, are always right aligned. So that's why the $1,000.29. And, uh, $1, I'm going to leave that a little bit there for now, but I will also just point out some basic formatting. Here on the Home tab, under the General Group, there is a, a dollar sign here, but that's called the Accounting Format. The column got a little bit wider there, and if I stretch that all the way to the right, you'll see that the dollar sign stays left aligned and the numbers are right aligned. And if the column gets too small, you can see that it turns into number signs. So to auto-fit the column to make it the right size, I just double-click by pushing my mouse between the left and the right, between the edge, the right side edge of column B, just double click with the left mouse button and it will automatically fit the column to be the right size. The other thing I will say is we're currently in accounting format, but I can choose from the drop down list and change the currency. Now the only difference between currency and accounting, one of the differences between a currency and accounting, uh, by the, between the accounting and currency format is if I make this column wider with currency, the dollar sign is not left aligned so that if you have some that were thousands and some dollars that were tens of thousands, then the dollar signs would be all jiggly and all ragged. So that's uh, up to you, the kind of formatting that you want to do. But also take a look that there are other settings here that you could look at. And generally, when we're working with dollars, it's either going to be currency or accounting. I'm going to stop the lesson here, and we're going to continue on by adding some new features a little bit later on.